Passion Jesus 36 Jesus carries his cross, LK 23, 26, 5 mints. Christ, why did he carry his cross? So the exegetes say that he did not really carry the whole cross, but only the sidebar, while the posts were already fixed on the place of the skull, Golgotha, where he was crucified. The question rather is, why carry your cross? Because everything, in his passion, is planned from all eternity by this God who wants to save us. The cross happens like this, he carries it. He was flogged. It's too heavy. He can't do it anymore. And so the Roman soldiers see a man coming down from the fields, with his son. They requisition him and ask him to help him carry his cross. This man is rather worried. He doesn't want to do that. He is afraid that he will be taken for a condemned man. Ultimately, it does. This man symbolizes all the good will, even of non-believers, the good deeds which dispose them to salvation, which do not save them. He does not know who he is carrying the cross with, but that makes him happy to be saved. It means that, when certain fundamentalists say that every act, which is not done with Christ, is done with the devil, they are mistaken. There are acts which are simply human, of good will and which certainly do not save but which do not lose either and which dispose for salvation. So there are three groups of humans on earth. Men who are deeply selfish by choice. Men who serve Christ by knowing it. And then the mass of men who do what they can to do good according to their conscience. They are not yet saved, I repeat, salvation is explicit love for this God known by faith but, they are obviously prepared. The fact that Christ falls many times does not mean that he has sinned, does not mean that, like us, he falls into sin to get up. The falls simply indicate that he wanted to take everything on himself, including weakness in the face of an extreme weight of life. He falls and he gets up. He tells us that if we fall, and we sometimes fall into sin, not only because of our weaknesses, we must do everything to try to get up, to start again to hold on to earth. And the earth is a purgatory, it is not paradise. But, it is short, in fact, compared to the eternity of glory that awaits us on the other side. The Gospel of Saint Luke tells a particular detail. On his way, women were crying because they had hoped so much for him. And then he said this, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. Rather, weep for yourselves and for your children for the days will come when one will say happy the barren, happy the womb which have not given birth, and breasts that have not nourished. Then, we will begin to say to the mountains, fall on us, and to the hills, cover us, because if we treat so green wood, what will happen to dry wood? It is a long prophecy which announces that in fact this suffering, sooner or later, will strike all men. I have said this often in these videos. And it's something that can sometimes annoy people because I insist on it. But to insist on moments of happiness is very good. But you have to prepare for the hour when what you don't like will happen. And why will it strike all men? Because it is the only way for man to come out of this life with a human heart, a heart of flesh and no longer a hard heart because he believes himself to be eternal. He learns by suffering to become merciful, and by the particular suffering which is called an experience of a certain nighttime of the spirit, of despair, like Christ on the cross. When this happens, nobody can love and besides nobody can want to live this moment. Simply, as long as one is in good health, the fact of thinking about it, the fact of knowing what Jesus shows here, is only the image of the life of every man, either in this world, or in the purgatory on the other side, in order to acquire a heart adapted to the beatific vision since no one can see God without dying. So, at least, we can live this cross when it arrives, as Christ lived it knowing that it has a meaning and that makes it immensely lighter. To find out, we look like a boat and, when the boat caught in the storm, knows which direction it is, because the compass is there, that changes everything, compared to a boat which no longer has a compass, which turns, turns, turns without direction. It does not make sense. It's the same storm, but it's much harder without Christ.